bringing it to his fucking house. Today we have Jamel Jones, PFL heavyweight. Uh, how's it going, man? Any, any preparations to your your second PFL bout? Man, I'm uh I'm excited, Breeze. I'm excited. You know, I'm here. Yes, sir. You know, and the time is now. Um, I'm mature in this game, and and I'm ready for everything that I'm about to face. Mm -hmm. And you are mature, you know, you, you fought in uh, uh, all the, the biggest banners almost, you know, with, with uh, tough, you've been on Dana White's contender series, Bellator uh, now being in the PFL and securing a, a win on, on the platform. What is different about being in the PFL and uh, what, what really makes it so special? And why did you decide to sign with them uh, for, uh, for your, for your career? Next steps. Well, you know, as you said earlier, we're family men. So at the PFL, what's different is the pay. You know, we all got a chance to win um, a million dollars. You know, it's, it's not nothing selected. It's no politics to it. When I came to the PFL, I was already behind in the season. You know, everybody was a fighter more than me. So when I came, I didn't plan on making it to the playoffs. I just wanted to win and put on a show. And I was going to get that million next year. Mm -hmm. With that being said, with great performances, I scored six points. I had the fastest knockout of the night. And now I'm in the playoffs. Um, so the PFL, man, they're putting people in great financial situations. Um, and and nothing's political about it. You just got to perform and and you get paid for that. That's that's awesome, man. I mean, you got to love that as competitor, having that that fair playing ground. Um, and, and you know, you, you did score big, you know, six points with a, a crazy knockout followed up by hammer fists. Seems to be your thing online. These hammer fists, they, they seem pretty deadly. Uh, do you practice your ground and pound in the gym or is that something that's just come natural to you? Oh, yeah. So so there's a lot of technique behind it. A lot of people might watch and think they can do that but if you look at the position and if you look at how I'm holding my opponent if you look how I post on my opponent if you look at the distance control that's nothing but technique shout out to my coach Sig Jitsu right on right on yeah we could tell it, it definitely is an effective technique uh, your your first uh viral knockout was uh the one over Tyler King I believe where you you landed the overhand and then followed up uh you talked in recent or in, excuse me in prior interviews about some of the backlash that you got after that finish um uh, was there anything synonymous with the PFL finish did you get any dms or any hate or or on the contrary any love no uh you know, from what I read, a lot of people were talking about the ref, but you know what I mean? Things move fast. And when you got an explosive athlete in there, I think that ref did the best he can. Um, you, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I didn't get backlash for that. But what people have to understand, number one, there's a whole lot of trolls and half of them are fake accounts and, mm -hmm. and everything. But what people have to understand, it's this is serious. It's kill or be killed. You know, it's two men going after each other. And even though we're professionals, somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. I've been seriously hurt in this game. I'm not no 21-year-old kid. I'm not a high schooler with aspirations. I'm 33 years old with a family. So when I sign a contract, I'm coming to kill um, every time. I love it. I love it. I know the fans love that too. Um, and, and when you come in, is your goal – uh, to make highlights or are you just kind of one of those guys that's like let's get in win on to the next fight or are you really uh, more intrigued about these these flash finishes that you've been securing no all my life even when I wrestled um, I did phenomenal stuff um, just crazy things exciting so me just being me I guess that's just who I am um, you know what I mean when I show up that's right. And they, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you talked about your wrestling background, but a lot of what's gotten you publicity is those those heavy hands. So uh, what, when did you start to find passion with your hands and how early on uh, did you fall in love with, with banging on people? So shout out to one of my opponents. Um, I fought a dude named Michael Rodriguez and and his stand up was just so much better than mine at the time. And, um, you know, after I got hit with that flying knee on the contender series, I really just went back to the drawing board. I wanted to figure this stand up thing out. You know, I want to be able to stand with anybody I'm in a room with. I want to literally be able to stand with anybody I'm in the cage with. 
I want to be comfortable. I want to be protected. So I just went back to the basics, um, fine tuned my boxing, and um, the wrestling's always been there. So 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 now I'm a I'm a double threat. Right on, right on. And we've definitely seen that. That's no joke. Um, you know, at, with your upcoming bout with uh, Bruno Capa, uh, Capaleza, uh, excuse me, Capaloza. Uh, Capaloza uh, you know, he's, he's the number one ranked guy. You're the number four. Like you said, you you just kind of fell into this spot here with the brag in the postseason. It wasn't necessarily on your agenda, but here you are now about to take out the number one ranked guy in the bracket. How do you like that matchup and being at, at the bottom of the rankings uh, facing the number one ranked guy? Well, you said something I like. You said about to take out, and I and I feel that way. I like Bruno. We got mutual friends and training partners, and, and there's much respect. But um, I'm coming, man. I'm bringing mine. I know he's going to bring his, too. He's never gone the distance. So, so my mindset literally is kill or be killed, and I'm fine. I'm fine with dying. You know, mm -hmm. I'm fine with however it goes. I'm going to fight my heart out and I'm going to do my game plan and, and I'm going to see what's up. Mm -hmm. But as far as number one, uh, I got one fight. Bruno's had some some phenomenal finishes and, and excitement himself, super explosive. Mm -hmm. um, a great athlete, a great mixed martial artist, a great, you know, working really hard, but in my book, I'm number one. I, I came into the PFL to be number one. Um, Kayla Harrison, she says something. This is the Kayla show. This is the Kayla show. Mm -hmm. And I love it because I'm right with her. This this the Kayla and Jamel show. <laughs> That's right, baby. That's right. I love it. And you you like you said, you have some background with Bruno. You guys, uh, you guys know each other. Can you speak on that and how uh how in-depth that relationship is? So I, I don't know him that well. But what I do know is I do I know um, one of my boys, Corey Anderson. I helped him train for a fight. Um, I helped him train against Pat Cummins, and then he took a fight on short notice against um, Glover to Sheriff, and he won both of those. So just to be a part of that fight camp, he brought me in. I stayed at his house. I got to know his wife. You know, um, I, f I follow them. He's 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 like. I don't know if he's older or younger than me, but he's like a big brother. You know what I mean? Cause he's been in this game too. Um, so Bruno helped Corey Anderson out against um, Johnny Walker. Mm -hmm. And then Corey was successful there. You know, he had a knockout on and Johnny Walker, who would ever knew that. Um, so we both helped somebody train and I know the type of guy Corey is. And um, when he brings people in, it's like family. So if they're family to him, they're, they're, they're cool with me 100%. Um, so just off Corey, Bruno gets my utmost respect as a fighter, as a family man, um, and as a competitor. But, but here it is, Corey's two boys are, are about to fight. That's right. That's right. Have you talked to Corey at all about this matchup? As have you uh, joked around? I'm sure he probably won't spoil any beans on either one of you guys for each other. But what uh, yeah. what do you guys talk about when you bring this matchup up? Well, you know, we talked about it instantly. I was at the PFL and I, I get to text him. He's in bed with his wife and he has two kids. So I know he's tired. He's hunting and doing all this stuff. He's like, bro, I'm in bed. So, but he got to text him. I'm like, yo, I'm about to fight Bruno. And he's like, no, <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's all good. I'm like, it's all good. We're going to get paid. He's like, yeah, but it's not good for me, man. My nerves and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then he basically said, congrats on the knockout and, and just do your thing, man. Um, you know, he's even faced, he's, he's about to fight Ryan Bader, who, who he's trained with and in the past and stuff. But when it comes to our family, when it comes to this money, um, when it comes to this championship belt and our goals and our aspirations, you got to put that aside and, and we got to get it on. That's what I was going to ask is how do you turn the switch? How do you, from knowing this guy through networking, knowing he's a family guy, he's got the same dreams, the same goals, the same lifestyle almost as you. Uh, how do you come fight day switch gears? It's hard to do. I, uh, Sometimes when I'm talking to my friends and, and my family and my dad, they don't really understand my, my mind because I'm such a nice guy. You know what I mean? My people, the people at my wife's work, he's so nice. I can't believe he fights. <laughs> but but deep down, I'm a killer, man. It, this sport has made me that way. Uh, I feel like a lion, man. Um, so 
the 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 switch it's it 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 comes on itself as mm-hmm. soon as i walk in the room it's like automatic lights mm-hmm. um been competing at a high level for so long you know i won my first national title when i was in sixth grade mm-hmm. and and i either been ranked number one in the country or doing phenomenal things since then you know so i'm going on literally 20 years of competing at a high level um so turning on that light switch is just something you got to do and that's something that everybody talks about uh you know, and has, it's been a hot topic for many, many years is, you know, what's the best base in martial arts? And a lot of people, you know, they say wrestling and having wrestled myself, you know, I feel like it does give you a lot of uh, of fundamentals, especially as a a youngster before getting into the actual, you know, dangers of mixed martial arts, being able to compete, being able to learn discipline, sportsmanship, all that stuff. How did wrestling help you get to where you are today? Man, it just made me tough. Not only tough, it made me compete. It pulled out the best of me. Um, not only that, it taught me how to lose, you know? And, and it taught me how to appreciate those good moments. It, 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 um, it's made me the man I am today, you know, as far as a competitor, as a father, you know, it takes some of that, uh, it, it just matures you as a man, mm-hmm. you know? It, it molds you as a, as a human being. So, um, You know, wrestling, the Olympics are going on right now. I'm watching phenomenal things. Shout out to the U.S. We're collecting the medals, man. Um, Most most medals since the, I think, 1988 we secured this year. So it's uh, it's been a monumental year. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So uh, I see those guys, man. And and it's so inspiring just watching the wrestling, watching the Olympics still. For my upcoming fight, man, it's making me close it out. I still have a wrestler's mentality. I'm not cutting weight or anything. So I'm working out all the way up until the fight. Like, I got this wrestler's thing. I don't care if I'm hurt. I don't care if this. I don't care. I'm a wrestler. I'm a fighter. I'm tough, you know? Um, Yes, sir. That's awesome. And then and we know you'll show up to the fight. It's coming up with Bruno. Uh, you both have my, uh, momentum going, right? You both have some finishes right behind you. And now you're leading up to this bout. Um, how do you see this playing out? I mean, I, I can't. I personally can't see it going the distance. Yeah, he's never going the distance, mm-hmm. you know? So, so, <laughs> and I don't go to distance much either. So I'm fine with that. Uh, it's kill or be killed, man. You know, mm. I really don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. You see any gra- any of that wrestling coming up in this fight, or you think this is going to be fireworks only? So he thinks it's going to be wrestling. <laughs> 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 I'm watching. Uh, he thinks it's going to be wrestling, but I'm a fighter, man. I like to put hands on people. Um, I want to see where his stand-up set. Uh, I'm bringing my game, man. I'm, I'm going to hit him hard. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not really, I don't go out there. I'm not the, I'm not the type of fighter that goes out there and like, yeah, I'm a wrestle. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never said that, you know, I'm bringing it to your house. Even if I take you down, I'm still not wrestling. I'm still not butt hugging. I'm still not hugging you and laying on you and stuff like that. There's purpose. There's intentions with my movements. Um, I'm bringing it to his fucking house. Excuse my French. No, we love it. We love it. Keep, keep the French going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I imagine you probably won't be training with Corey much for this fight. Uh, maybe he'll stay out of it. But who uh, who have you been working with leading up to this bout? Yeah, so so I quit my – I used to work at a place called Cellular Sales. Um, it's an authorized retailer for Verizon. It's a great company, made great money, had great opportunities. But in 2020, I quit there some sometime around March, and I decided I kept I – w- I was working, and I couldn't – really distinguish my MMA career. And actually in my MMA career, I had the most losses while I had a job. Mm-hmm. So I told myself I was gonna quit there. And I did. Uh, I didn't get a fight all the way till Tyler King, literally seven months later, but I was training. So um, right then and there, I started incorporating groups for me, mitt men, wrestlers, individual people so i do my own fight camps and then i get i'm real selfish with it um i do go to my team for practice but um my fights and my practices are are only for me i don't have any real big names 
Um, but just the people in Spokane and the people in Idaho um, have been helping me. You know, I got amateurs. I got ex-wrestlers. I got ex-Muay Thai guys. I got, yeah, I got the best of what I need, you gotcha. know? Fantastic. A lot of there's a lot of philosophy on that, too, is like, how do you put together the best fight camp? Do you stay in the gym where the classes aren't really catered to you or more yes. of your approach, you know, where it's like, hey, I'm bringing these guys in for my game. Um, has it always been that way for you? No, but it has been that way since Tyler King. I, when I knocked out Tyler King, I had teammates that was six, seven at the time. Um, my boy, Daniel Spitz. And, you know, I've seen guys that big and I know I, I, yeah, so every fight, I make my fight camps now just for me. Um, and yeah, so I don't got people trying to hurt me. I don't got people trying to prove stuff to me, you know, because now MMA is something that everyone can do. Even, even you can go into a class and if you don't know what you're doing, you know, you might give it your all. Well, I'm in practice really trying to learn and get technical and, and get on things. Mm hmm so everything, everybody I work with is, is there to help me. Um, I do got a couple names that have been there for all of my fights. Um, they know who they are. I'm not, I don't have to shout them out like that. But yeah, my fight camps are specific for me. My coach was training Juliana in Chicago, and he literally called up guys, hey, get this guy. Hey, get this guy. You know, I drive an hour, and sometimes they drive an hour. Um, mm -hmm. All to just help me out. And I imagine that you must feel different with with this whole strategy when you came up to your your uh, debut in the PFL. Could you feel all that work com coming to fruition? That specialized focus. Yeah, because I knew how good my first guy Clitson Abreu. I knew how good he was. You know, in the gym, he's a monster. He can grapple. He can wrestle. But um, like I said, I was going to bring it to his house. Mm -hmm. With that fight, I, I stayed disciplined. He was so technical that I just had to stay disciplined to what I was doing. And um, everything on the feet, I basically countered to the takedowns. And then when I got on top, I matched I matched my ground versus his ground. And, and obviously mine was better. I didn't care about a black belt. You know, Tyler King was a black belt. Um, Cody Goodell is a black belt. You know, so this, is, this wasn't my first rodeo. That was my third black belt in a row. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Very yeah. impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. I'm bringing it to their house, just like I'm going to do Bruno. And if he brings it to mine, he's a bad man. He's already a bad man. He's a number one seed. We're fighting for a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, so yeah, let's fight. It's just that simple. I love it. I love it. And look, you know, you, you said it before, you're a late entry to this bracket. Um, a lot of guys have been in camps, have been taking injuries, nicks and crannies and, and uh, more fights. Um, do you think uh, at all this could give you an advantage? Maybe you come in a little fresher to this postseason. Yeah, well, I've been fighting. If you look at it, if I win this fight and I make it to the finals, uh, which is in October, that would be six scheduled fights in a 12 month calendar year for me. Mm -hmm. um, so, or, or, or in 12 months, I shouldn't say a calendar year. Yeah, but, but yeah. In 12 months, that would be six fights for me. Who else is doing that? You got to go to somebody like, uh, what's my man, Trailblazer? Uh, oh, Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Got, he's the only one that wants to fight like that. I'm built for this. You know, when you wrestle, you're in high school, you wrestle twice during the week and you got tournaments on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I really feel like that. I knocked out the one dude eight weeks later. I'm freaking fighting Bruno. I'm in the, you know, I knock him out. Nine weeks later, I'm fighting for the championship. So it's just another tournament. It's just another competition for me, but it's more on the line. Yeah. And back to the wrestling background, um, you know, do you think that's, it's got to give you some, uh, some advantage there because it, it comes down to pacing yourself and, uh, and saving energy when you need to, but also uh, just how to make it through a bracket, you know, all, all the things that come with that. Um, how do you think wrestling is going to help you here with this PFL bracket? Well, the PFL says win or go home. And right now in the playoffs, that's really how it is. The, the season's almost over for PFL. So if I, if I win, I fight for that belt. You know, I just, I just vacated my belt for the CFFC organization I love and I put on my back 
Um, so I have the opportunity to pick right back up and get this PFL world title. Um, so I'm definitely not pacing myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and, and as far as the brackets and wrestling, it teaches me how to take it one step at a time. You notice I didn't get, I, we didn't talk about any of the other guys. It's four of us. Mm-hmm. And the only focus is Bruno because this is what's in front of me. He's a, he's a tall task. He's number one. Um, but also I know that if I beat him, I'm that dude. You know, I realized too, I made my mind up that every, I'm going to be an underdog for the PFL for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm okay with that um, because you bet against me, uh, you know, you better gamble responsible. Uh, that's okay. It's okay. When you're the underdog, you make your people a lot of money. So it's okay. But uh, yeah, speaking of money, um, you know, I know you're, uh, it's early. I appreciate you spending the time with me this morning. So I'll, I'll probably just end it here with this great question. But how, uh, how do you intend to spend that million dollars? Uh, if you secure that bag, what's the first thing you're doing when you get that check? I got paid a lot of money for knocking out Capalozzi, you know, yeah. you see these checks come after a knockout. And all these zeros, you know, but I still haven't bought a pair of shoes. I own my house. I own my vehicle. I'm 33 years old. I got a family. So what this money is going to do, it's going to set me up for forever. You know what I mean? I, a million dollars isn't rich anymore, um, but but it's definitely serious. So I'm not buying anything. Uh, right. I'm putting it up. I'm, I'm taking care of my wife. I'm taking care of my family. My gym... Um, it's a phenomenal camp and, and my, my coach is building it himself on a property that he bought. Um, so I want to contribute to that. I want to lead, lead for lead for my team. We got a couple guys. We got a guy on the ultimate fighter. We got Mike Chiesa fighting the night. Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. And if we all can come together um, and help our coach out, you know, yeah. That's something so, special. Yeah. Right yeah on. Him built so, so the future can get it. Let me secure the bag for the future for my family. And um, and that's it, man. You know, like what a great answer, man. What a what a great answer for for somebody yeah. who's about to secure such a, a, a crazy opportunity. Well, look, I appreciate your time uh, coming on with me with the show. It's uh, it's been great chopping it up with you. I know it's early over there. I'll be tuning into your fight. We'll be watching, uh, wishing you nothing but success. And uh, hope to chat soon after uh, after the next one. Yeah, Breeze, I would like that, man. It's been um, good talking to you, good vibes. And um, tune in, man, win, lose, or draw. You know, I'm going to put it all out there. Mm-hmm.